Life drops remixes on you daily. Sage, sage advice. My five biggest problems with LLM chat are addressed by this project and maybe you have some of these problems too. In the terminal, we can just do sure and we get a kind of chat GPT like interface that looks fairly familiar. We can press N to make a new chat and things are looking pretty familiar except at the top of the screen where you can see numbers one through seven. And those numbers represent the models that are going to be enabled for the prompt that I'm about to write. If I do control shift M, we can see the models that I have enabled starting with Quen 3 235B. So I have seven different models enabled spanning six different inference providers. Stepping back for a second, you do need to set API keys for all of the inference providers that you wanna use. If you don't have an API key yet, don't worry, you can just use mine. This is my OpenAI API key, just use this. I'm, I'm kidding, I, I'm gonna delete this key before you see this video, hopefully. These are the API keys that are currently supported. By the time you watch this video, we might support more. For this demo, I'm gonna have all of these API keys set. You don't necessarily have to set all of them. So I'm gonna start my first prompt here. We're gonna do something profound. After I send the prompt, I can use the asterisk character to cycle through all the models for which a response has already been received. You can see at the top there, the numbers in yellow actually represent the models that have not yet received a response. They're slowly coming back. Quen3 was the first to receive a response as usual. You can see GPT-5 is actually still going. You can see the loading spinner. H and L cycle through left and right respectively through all of the models, irrespective of whether the responses come back, kind of like Vim going left and right in Vim. One other thing about this prompt field is that you can use Vim motions to move around in it. So I can press I to enter insert mode. I can type some words and I can use B to move backwards and W to move forwards amongst the words. I can use escape to exit insert mode and capital D to delete the whole line. Yeah, man, spark without a lamp burns out. Lamp without a spark is just hardware. <laughs> Life drops remixes on you daily. Sage, sage advice. That's cool. We're gonna add a follow-up prompt here. So while this is pending, again, you can see the numbers in yellow represent the models that still have pending requests. I can move up and down in the conversation by using K and J respectively, just like Vim. It's just like moving up and down lines in Vim. I can do capital G to move to the bottom of the conversation, double G to move to the top, that's GG, just like Vim. Regarding the chat history, I can use Z to move down and Q to move up. I can also prefix those with numbers. So I can do 10 Z to move 10 chats down, 10Q to move 10 chats up. We have full text search. Type slash to enter search mode. I can type in a query. It's gonna give me my results. Press enter to kind of navigate around in the results. And then my, you can see my keyword is actually highlighted in the results. And this is going to search chat content and titles as well. When I wanna remove the query filter, I can just press enter. And the last, chat that I had highlighted is still highlighted after the filter is removed. I mentioned five problems with LLM chat that this project aims to address. So let's talk about those. But first I need to recoup some of the costs that I incurred making these prompts that I just showed you, which is perfect because this video is sponsored by Let's Get Rusty. Actually, these prompts are not very expensive, but we'll talk about that in a second. I haven't mentioned this yet, but Shore is written entirely in Rust. A few years ago, Rust was kind of an up and coming language, but now all the most important organizations are using it. It's even in the Linux kernel. Let's Get Rusty has helped me and thousands of other developers master the language. They're running a new cohort soon and since spots are limited, now is a great time to check it out. Visit letsgetrusty.com slash start with CTTM or just click the link in the pinned comment below. Big thanks to Let's Get Rusty for supporting the channel. Back to the five problems with language model chat that I mentioned earlier. Number one, keyboard native user interfaces. I like to spend most of my day on the keyboard and whenever I have to switch to the mouse, I feel like it breaks my flow. One of the main reasons I found that I have to do that is when I wanna ask language models a question. Shore is a terminal-based application and there is a keyboard command for everything. And I feel like that helps me stay in that flow state. Number two is speed. And this is a big one because I feel like a lot of people don't know about it yet. These big language model providers, OpenAI, Anthropic, they do have smaller models like Haiku or GPT-5 Nano that are faster than their flagship models, but they are nowhere near as fast as something like Quen3 running on Cerebrus. What I like to do is put a really fast model as model number one, typically that's Quen3 235B served by Cerebrus, and the response comes back pretty much instantaneously. And I sometimes enable other language models that might be slower but smarter. I'll read through the Quen3 result while I'm waiting for the other language models to finish. 
And then once they do finish, I'll go and look at those and kind of compare it with what I read from Quen 3. Usually Quen 3 is extremely accurate. I haven't come across many cases where GPT-5 said something substantially different from what Quen 3 said. So that's what I like to do. Number three is a technical acronym. FOMO, fear of missing out. If you're like me, you might have a subscription to OpenAI or Anthropic, and you might bounce back and forth between the two depending on who happens to have the better benchmark scores at a given time. Even if you're using the one with the better benchmark scores, you might prompt it and then wonder, well, what would the other model have said? With Shore, you can prompt as many models as you want at the same time, so you never have to wonder what that other model would have said. Now you're probably thinking, isn't that going to get expensive if you're prompting a bunch of models all the time? And that leads me to problem number four, which is cost. If you have one of those $20 a month monthly subscriptions, it's extremely unlikely that you're actually getting $20 of value out of that subscription. What I mean is if you were to perform all those prompts using the pay as you go API, instead of using your monthly subscription, you would have to do a lot of prompting to actually accumulate $20 worth of API bills. And so if you're considering subscribing to multiple providers, Anthropic, OpenAI, et cetera, it probably makes a lot more sense to subscribe to maybe just one so you have access to something on your phone. So anytime you wanna see what a bunch of different models say for a given prompt, hop on your computer, use Shore, use the pay-as-you-go API pricing, which is actually fairly reasonable for most models. You're usually paying a few pennies per million tokens. And unless you're doing some really heavy prompting, it would take a long time to accumulate $20 worth of billing from just using the APIs. Problem number five, there were no language model chat interfaces written in Rust. So problem resolved. I'm kidding about that one, kind of. But the first, the first four problems were a big deal to me and this is my solution for those. Let me know what you think of this. Is this vaporware? Is this something you would use? Is it something you would never use? Are there some killer features that you'd like to see that would get you to use it? This is completely open source. I would love contributions. I would love bug reports, all the things. Thank you again to Let's Get Rusty for sponsoring this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.